Hey guys, it's General Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So for today's video, we are doing another weapon comparison across uh, at least a lot of the Halo games. Uh, this weapon we'll be comparing today is the Gravity Hammer by popular request. Don't worry, uh, I've seen all your requests and there are definitely a few other popular ones I'll be getting to soon, so if we're not, if we, if we haven't gotten to it yet, don't worry, just stay tuned, we'll get to it soon. But for today, we're doing the Gravity Hammer first. So, the Gravity Hammer. We will be comparing the ones from Halo 2. Halo 2's Gravity Hammer actually will be comparing for fun, because it's not, it's not like a serious weapon that you can actually use, but I just want to throw the numbers in there just for fun, so you can kind of see like how it compares. But we'll be comparing Halo 2, Halo 3, ODST and Halo 4. Now, as usual, for the same reasons, we can't compare Halo 5 because uh, we don't have any mod tools that can access the official, the actual numbers on the game files to make an objective comparison. So that's why we have to leave Halo 5 out. But I will actually still talk about Halo 5 a bit in this video because the Halo 5's hammer is, well, pretty special. Um, but I'll discuss that later. So for now, let's get right into the comparison. So Halo 2, the only gravity hammer in the game is Tartarus's gravity hammer, also known as the Fist of Rucked. Uh, this hammer is not usable by players, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have numbers for it. So it's it doesn't have a lunge to it, because only Tartarus uses it. Its main damage, the you know the big gravity thing, does 500 points of damage. It's a crazy high number. And then it seems like, I'm not quite sure this is the correct number, but it seems like it has a regular melee damage without the gravity swing, but does 75 points of damage. Now technically the hammer itself does zero damage all around. This melee damage is actually attached to Tartarus' Tartarus biped instead of the hammer itself. The hammer itself is actually harmless, but when Tartarus does his own melee, it's it looks like the hammer is actually doing the damage when it's not. So technically you could say that hammer does nothing, but... For, for the sake of like comparison for argument, we'll just say it, his, his actual personal melee is the same as his uh, hammer melee. But anyways, next Halo game is Halo 3, the first Halo game where you actually can use the gravity hammer in gameplay. And it's still a pretty decent weapon, actually. So, it has a lunge of 6 meters when you um, lunge at someone. Uh, its main damage, though, its right trigger damage, is only 150 down from a lot in Halo 2, right? Well, like I said, that wasn't a player usable weapon, so it doesn't really count. So 150 for Halo 3 is actually pretty good. And then the melee damage, if you don't do the gravity swing, it's just 80 points of damage. So not a bad start, I guess. Um, but that is Halo 3 stats. Now, the next Halo game we can actually compare is ODST. We don't get to compare ODST very often because most of the time the weapons in ODST are identical to Halo 3's and in many ways the ODST gravity hammer is still identical to Halo 3's as far as like its range and everything and stuff like that, its lunge, but it's uh, its damage is actually different enough that I did want to throw in this comparison. So without further ado, let's take a look at the stats for Halo 3, for Halo 3 ODST's gravity hammer. So its lunge is still the same range, but its damage is now 100, down from 150 in Halo 3. And its regular melee, the non-gravity melee, is only 65 points, down from 80. And I guess this makes sense, because it's meant to reflect that ODSTs are not as strong as Spartans, so it does make you feel a little weaker, a little, I guess, when you use it. Um, I mean, if you hit a brute point blank, 100 points of damage will still kill the brute anyways, but it is technically weaker in ODST. Now moving on to Halo Reach. The Halo Reach hammer is aesthetically changed a lot from Halo 3. There's quite a few things different with it, um, appearance-wise, but spec-wise there's also a few changes. One change is that the, I guess the radius or the range at which you can feel the damage or the effects of the Reach's hammer is lower than Halo 3. But I, I don't actually have the exact numbers for that. I couldn't find them anywhere to give you like the exact numbers. So I'm only mentioning it here. But as for the numbers we can actually compare that I could find, its lunge is still the same as Halo 3's. Uh, its damage is back up to 150, like in Halo 3. But its regular melee damage is only 79 points of damage. One point less than Halo 3's regular melee damage. It's, it's actually strange. I don't know why they don't just do like a round number and make it 80, but hey, it's, it's what it is. 
Now, after Halo Reach comes Halo 4, which brings quite a few changes as well. For Halo 4's hammer, it's, it still has a lot of similarities, but this is really weird. Like, right here, when you watch it, it has that weird, like, floating in the air and spinning around, like, magnetic melee for it. For it. I don't even know what to, des what to describe it as. I never noticed it until, like, today, actually. It's such a weird melee. I don't know if it's like a positive or a negative of the Halo 4 hammer. I mean, feel free to discuss it, but as far as the actual specs go, um, its lunge is still 6, uh, its main damage is still 150, but its melee damage is uh, less than Halo Reach's now. It's actually 70. Normally, Halo 4's weapons are almost identical to Reach's, but in this case, the regular melee is a little less. Um, oh, and one other thing um, that, again, I don't have the numbers for, but it's damage, range, or radius, distance. It's also uh, increased a little bit over Halo Reach again. But again, I don't have exact numbers to compare, so we're not going to throw that into the uh, comparison. So which Halo game actually has the best hammer? Well, technically, that would be Halo 2, because the Fist of Rock does a crazy, like, boss weapon, <laughs> literally. It does crazy amounts of damage. It has an invincible like overshield to it, um, almost invincible at least. But it's not an actual player usable weapon, so we're not going to consider it as um, <laughs> a comparable weapon in this case. And I'm not going to declare it the best. I mean, technically it is the best, but I'm not going to say it's the best compared to the other games because it's not usable. The actual best hammer throughout the series, I would say, is Halo 3's hammer. It has like the, aside from like the uh, damage it has like the greatest range like you can really feel its effects from pretty far away compared to the newer Halo games but again I don't have a way to measure that exactly um, I, I can't I couldn't find the numbers in there so I don't want to like definitively like use that as the only example for why it's better um, but based on the numbers that we could compare its damage its main damage is the same as like Halo region 4 150 but its regular melee damage is 80 compared to 70 from Halo 4 and 79 from Halo Reach. So that alone makes it better <laughs> in terms of like, its regular melee. Um, but for everything else, it's pretty similar to the other hammers. It Overall, the hammer hasn't changed much throughout each Halo game. There's a few differences in like range and stuff like that and a little bit of damage. But overall, the hammer is mostly the same. So with that in mind, like I said, it's, they're pretty close to each other, but because of the regular melee damage and observation-wise, the range of the Halo 3's hammer effects, I would say Halo 3 has the best gravity hammer. Now, I did say earlier that I would talk a little bit about Halo 5. Technically, without being able to compare Halo 5 objectively, I think Halo 5 might actually still have the best hammer because some of the wreck variants, like Tartarus' Gavel or the uh, Corpse Maker, they have some pretty OP like effects to them, and it might make them more powerful, but again, I can't actually compare it and determine like objectively if Halo 5's hammers are better, but given the wreck variants, I think some of them might actually be better than Halo 3's hammer. Um, just a thought there. But yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this comparison, and if you did enjoy it and found it to be interesting, make sure to uh, leave a like, and you know, leave your thoughts in the comments, let me know what you want me to compare next, and I'll definitely do my best to get around to it soon. Uh, and other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!